So I worked on doing my rest rehabilitation exercises and trying to get sleep, but with my pain level and everything else, I wasn't able to sleep good, which I more recently read that uh, not enough sleep can cause all kinds of health issues. So I'm sure that did not help. I was waiting for the doctor that I had applied to go to, that I was told to go to, um, back Thanksgiving time, waiting for them to get a hold of me, and they never did. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And finally, somebody I went to school with saw how bad I was and said that she was taking me to the big hospital to get checked out, that they'd find out what was going on. So, 4th of July, I ended up in the, the big hospital. I ended up staying. And my whole issue with being, I don't know, I don't trust doctors or hospitals. And with everything else, I ended up, I almost died July 4th while I was in the hospital. And it come to find out that... She had damaged my pancreas when she hit. That's what the, the pain in my abdomen was about, that the doctor said, oh, that's not important. Don't worry about it. And because she damaged my pancreas and it wasn't dealt with, I mean, I had no idea. I figured it was just from the accident that I had internal bruising and it would take a while to heal. And because it wasn't taken care of, I ended up with diabetes and it went into neuropathy because of not being taken care of like it should have been. Which, if the doctor had just said, you need to keep up on this, we need to be checking, we, you know, there's things that could be going on that we need to keep on top of. But he acted like it was no big deal. So, I'm going to find out. I've got diabetes and I've got neuropathy. And so, on top of losing my job my car being totaled, my whole life being thrown upside down. I've got this to deal with, which means that even though I, I ate healthy, I didn't eat a lot of sugar. I mean, I'd have some cookies here and there, but I really didn't eat that much as far as sugar and, and stuff. And I always tried to eat healthy, you know, lean meat. I cut the fat off and healthy vegetables. I love to eat vegetables. But now I've got to be extra careful. And I know they say a lot of times that it's because you didn't eat right or that it's in your family. No. No. I don't remember ever hearing of anybody in either side of my family having diabetes. And I ate right. I mean, I couldn't have ate any better, really, you know. Um, my ex used to sit down and he'd eat a whole package or, or two packages of cookies in a day. And I told him that's not good. I'd have just a couple, two, three of them here and there and that's it, you know. So, I now have an uh, expensive diet because I have to watch what I eat and be very careful to buy only certain things. And... I have to have Josh help me because the neuropathy is so bad. I can't work. Um, I can't do hardly anything. It's really hard. And I know a lot of people keep telling me I need to forgive that woman, and I can't. And I know God probably wants me to. But it's so hard to forgive somebody that did something on purpose, that didn't act like she felt bad, never apologized or even asked how we were. How can I forgive her with all of this? And it's an ongoing thing now. Josh picks my finger for me to check my levels. And uh, luckily, my I've had some high levels because my pancreas is just, I call it wonky. It just is all messed up. It doesn't really know how to act because she damaged it. I feel that it's healing because my numbers have come down to what they had been, but they're still not as good as I belong to a diabetes group. And I know sometimes people are, oh, my level is so high. It got up to 113. And I'm like, really? <laughs> That's not high. Not not compared with what I'm dealing with. 
And yet I see people that end up with their sugar levels are four or 500 or, or more on a fairly regular basis. So mine aren't bad considering, but I miss being how it used to be. I miss being healthy and not having to be so picky about what I eat. I mean, I'm careful anyway, have been. But, you know, if if I wanted something sweet, it wouldn't have been a huge deal. Hey, something here and there a little bit, you know. Which reminds me, I have somebody that I've called sister for years. And uh, I've told her and told her since July 4th that I'm diabetic because of that woman hitting us. And we were at her place about a month ago. And I said it again. And she left to, to go pick something up. And she came back and she shoves ice cream in my face. Ice cream for a diabetic. And it wasn't just a little teeny dish. It was a whole 20 ounce cup filled and it had chocolate syrup on top. And then she got mad when I said I couldn't have it. I said, I can't have it. It's not like I'm trying to lose weight and I just want to lose a few pounds. I said, I cannot have it. Oh, she started screaming and having a fit. And then, I forget now if it was a couple weeks later or something, she did the same thing again. Ice cream in my face. It's like, I can't have it. Well, then at one point, we come over because Josh, my son, he works over here, helps out her boyfriend with stuff around the, the house and yard and when we pulled in she starts screaming and she's like you guys fucked up my electrical and I looked at Josh and I as I parked I'm like is she talking to us and he said I don't know and so she started fussing and so I asked her are, are you talking to us you mean us Oh, no, she was talking to her boyfriend. But then again, within seconds, she's looking at my van and she starts screaming more about how we fucked up her electrical. And I said something more. And she got all bent out of shape. She spent the next two hours screaming at me, calling me names. I've got five minutes of it on audio before my, my phone ran out. But it's enough for you to... You, you can see what she's like. She, um, she called me all kinds of names, and then she come around to my side of the van. Suddenly she opened the door, and she hauled off, and she hit me. She hit me. For what? Because at one point, I was like, well, that's the way that it came across, is that you were yelling at us. I mean, how else were we supposed to take it? And I still believe she was. But I still can't believe somebody that I called sister, that I trusted. I don't trust her anymore. I want nothing to do with her. Josh still helps her boyfriend with stuff around here. And that's where we're at right now. And you can hear her in the background. But uh, I sit in the van. I have the doors locked. And I want nothing to do with her. Even just hearing her voice and knowing she's here, it stresses me out. My levels go high. So I'm really hoping we can get this channel going and get to where we don't have to be over here if she's here. Because I, I just, it's not good for my health and I don't trust her. Um, when I'm done posting this, I'll see about going ahead if I can upload the audio so you can hear what she was like. And she was so bad that she she couldn't even hardly talk she kept stuttering she's never stuttered before but all right i'm gonna let you go and i'll see if i can get this uploaded and then try and get that that audio uploaded especially since i want to get this done before she comes over and starts interrupting because i don't want to have to do it all over again so you guys take care bye